Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. All right. Let's start off with Sunny for a minute. I'm going to be kind of going in a very odd pace because certain things was interesting and other things was not necessary. Sunny, right? So, for some odd reason, when Sonny and Dex came to Kelly's and Sonny wanted to talk to Jocelyn, she, he didn't bring up the fact that Spencer pretty much outed, you know, Joss and Dex as far as hooking up and everything. I don't understand why. It's not really making a lot of sense to me. But he brings her out there and he's like, he talks about enemies or whatever, like, you know, if you and your mom or whatever, you know, see anything that's suspicious or whatever, I have a lot of enemies going on, or something along those lines, and I was just like, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, cool, so this is going to be the day that you're going to sit and confront her about, you know, her relationship with Dex. Nope. Nope. None whatsoever. And of course, Josh does what Josh normally does. He sits there and berates Sonny, his... His um his business, his lifestyle, and blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing also, which I find so laughable about the situation. So she talks about how it's heartbreaking that her sisters and everything like that have to go through this lifestyle and she has to go through this lifestyle and stuff. And she blames Sonny, but I'm just like, you do realize that your mom married this man and you were integrated with his lifestyle. So instead of using it there being so adamant and so oh sunny your lifestyle and this time the third how come you're not giving any of that smoke to your mom for pretty much bringing you into that lifestyle so to be honest a, a lot of her talk was just very bs and it's just ugh. so while that's going on cam talks to dex Long story short, Cam is just like, listen, if Josh gets hurt, I'm making sure that you get hurt. I will sit there and literally blow your secret to Sonny. I will make sure he knows and um, it won't be good. Now, here's the thing. I give Cam a lot of credit. He is a much more stronger man than me. For him to sit there and still consider Josh somebody he finds important, somebody he wants to protect, even after what she did to him, is nothing short of remarkable. Now, at some point when Josh talks to, to Cam or whatever, they talk about their friends and they're still friends and stuff like that, like Cam... Still considers Josh a friend and, you know, wants her to be at his party and everything like that. So, you know, they talk and it's very simple, right? Laura comes into the, Laura comes into Kelly's and talks with Josh. And Josh is like, you know, she feels guilty and stuff like that. And she's like, you know, he's hurting and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm worried because I want to make sure we're okay. And, you know, he says that we're friends and we grew up together, but I just don't know. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. This, this is not, <laughs> we're, we're just going to, we're just going to sit there and take five steps back. That's not how that works. You don't get to sit there and tell him, you don't get to sit there and dictate his, his emotions to where it suits your benefit. You know, you feel guilty, that's on you, okay? You don't get to sit there and speed up his timetable as far as when he's going to let it go. The fact that he's not berating you or cursing you out or anything else, you should consider that to be a good thing, okay? So that happens, right? <laughs> Sonny, all right, here, here's, you know, this, this level of, of disrespect with Miss Wu needs to be nipped in the bud, okay? First, you have Curtis, and I'm just like, bro, she should have found somebody to, um, 
I don't know, start breaking some knuckles or, or toes or something. And now Sonny. Sonny talks to Miss Wu. He's like, you know, listen, you know, do you know this guy? Whatever. Apparently he frequents your bar and stuff like that. So I need a name. And she's like, I, I can't give you that. I don't interact with, you know, like she owns the bar or whatever, but she doesn't interact with her customers and stuff like that. And so Sonny is like, you know, it's the second time that you disappointed me. I'm like, Bro, you do realize that she doesn't work for you, right? And I understand that maybe maybe Miss Wu is not there playing the long game, okay? Because Sunny just comes across as extremely arrogant, you know? Y'all y'all have a work relationship. She's not your secretary, bro. She don't work for you. And, you know, she's all like, you know, this is about the whole brand no deal. Uh, the brand knows garage and everything like that. And she's like, hey, you know, I said I told you and I'm sorry and, you know, I'll look into it for you and stuff like that. And, you know, attack on you. We, you know, we take that very personal. So I'll look into it for you. And I'm just like, she should not have to be cow to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, she should not have to be sniffed their cow to you. This is ridiculous on so many levels, but okay, whatever. Sure. Um, Sonny's world, and we all just live in it, apparently. Why not to be pretty BS, but whatever. Now, let's talk about Spencer for a minute. Spencer and Trina. At this point, we all know how I feel about Spencer, right? I believe I'm actually saying this. When it came towards the Spencer and the Trina scenes, I actually enjoy Spencer's scenes so much more than listening to Mopey Trina throughout that time with Marshall. Let me get to that scene in a minute. So... You know, he comes downstairs and he has some sort of organic drink or whatever. And, you know, with Esme, he seems like he starts to get into it with her. And then Victor comes in. And Laura's downstairs. Laura Smith, you're trying to keep the peace. Victor just knocks on the door. And, you know, he's like, oh, I want to sit there and see my grandson or whatever. And he's just like, let's just sit there and say his ego, his bravado, is compensating for... Something that doesn't really work the same. Just leave it at that. Spencer so comes to the door. Spencer's so like, you know, listen, you know, we can't, can't really be doing this here or whatever. Like, he gets, he gets Victor to calm down because Victor's like, yo, listen, I do what I want, where I want, wherever I want, and there's nobody's gonna sit there and stop me. He de-escalates the situation. You know, he's he's being diplomatic. I give him props for that, and he takes him back to, um. You know, his place or whatever. And long story short, you know, Victor has a plan as far as um, planning evidence on Esme. You know, because Victor's like, listen, I don't want anyone raising that baby except for a castle. And of course, you know, Spencer was like, and, and grandmother, right? <laughs> you know, because, cause, you know, she has, she has family. I mean, you know, I know you said the whole no, you know, anything that's not Cassidine, but I mean, she, she has still family. So I, I give him I give him a lot of props for that. I give him a lot of props for that. Usually he acts like an entitled tool, but I, I give him his props for that. So I guess that's going to be the plan. Now this scene with Trina and Hat Daddy, aka Marshall, is pretty much just Marshall questioning Trina's relationship with Spencer. And I understand that he want. I understand that he wants to sit there and look out for her, right? But at some point, I'm like, bro, you do realize that she she is practically a grown woman. She can make her own decisions about who she decides she wants to sit there and spend time with. She shouldn't have to sit there and explain to you all the different reasons why she likes him and stuff like that. Um, you know, she does sit there and say right now that his, his life is very complicated because, you know, living with Resume and the baby and everything like that, it's, 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 it's a lot, you know? And, of you know, 
there's a couple of times where Marshall was talking about, you know, compromises and stuff like that. What kind of compromises is he making for her? Now, it does get to a point where, where Marshall's like, listen, if things get a little bit too complicated, you might just want to kind of ease to the left or whatever. And again, I get it. He wants to dare and, and, you know, his family, he wants to look out for her and stuff like that. But I'm like, you know, she shouldn't have to be explaining her emotions about how she feels to Spencer to you. Like, she doesn't report to you or anything like that. It's, it's I felt like it was just kind of a little extra, to be honest. And, of course, when um, Spencer comes to the door, you got Hat Daddy Smith there looking at him like he's public enemy number one. And I'm like... All right, bro, just, 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 just take it down a couple of notches, you know? Um, they do talk about Epiphany, and, you know, that's going to be coming up soon. So you had Marshall, you had Liz yesterday. So, we, you know, I feel like it's kind of bracing people for this whole tribute thing. That's going to be going on their 60th anniversary. Yeah, YNR this week celebrating their 50th, and... Sooner or later, G is going to be snipped there celebrating their 60th. I wonder what Days is actually going to do at this point. I remember what BNB did. They just decided to make the the 35 or whatever year about Brooke Logan and all the men that she's been with. That just seemed like that made sense to someone. Um, <laughs> so... Going with Valentine and, and Anna, you know, they present this fake necklace with some fake coordinates or whatever. And they're like, Eileen, we need you to sit there and give it to them. We need you to sit there and wear a wire. And Eileen's like, yeah, um, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> nope. No, 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 no. You're pretty much just going to get me killed at that point. So I think Anna, Valentine's like, listen, we, we kind of prepared you. He was going to say that, um... So we got Robert on standby. And, you know, Eileen Smith there worried that, you know, Victor's going to get somebody to sit there and check it out. So long story short, you know, they're just like, yo, you're going to have to sell this. You're going to have to make this seem like you got to sit there and get this necklace now to go and go to the coordinates now. Otherwise, you know, the police are going to be sitting there starting to look for it at some point. So she delivers it to Victor and she's like, all right, well, um, here you go. Here's necklace. And, uh, I got some, some work to do. So I'm just going to kind of just bounce. And Victor's like, Oh, where are you going? I mean, the, the, the fun is just starting. So he starts to sit there and take a look at it, whatever, um, do one of those eye things that apparently that's, you know, how you make sure that something is real or fake or whatever. We're just making Eileen hella nervous. Um, you know, she's in this hotel with this guy. Don't know what could wind up happening. Um, and if he spots that that thing is a fake, it's a wrap. <laughs> it is a wrap. Now, Laura's not there talking to Asme, because I was about to sit there and say, I was like, is that, am I missing something? So Laura's not there talking to Asme, just trying to get her to relax more, trying to get her to trust Laura more, you know, um, talking about Spencer and everything like that. And it gets to a point where Laura's like, listen, I'm going to sit there and have a leap of faith, because I get it. You can't really, you know, you don't have a memory or anything like that. You can't really sit there and know who to trust. So, you know, I'm just going to let you leave. I'm just going to leave you with the baby, whatever. Here's some money. And, um, you know, I'm just going to leave. You know, I'm just going to have a leap of faith for you. So she leaves. And after a while, Esme gets kind of skittish or whatever. And she's like, hey, you know, maybe I could sit there and trust Laura. But as far as Victor and Spencer, yeah, I can't really sit there and trust them. So she gets the baby. She takes the money, whatever. And she's about to just head on out. She opens the door and she sees Cam. And, you know, if you saw the previews, you know, Cam's just like, so, um, where, 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 where you at it? (laughs) 
In all reality, I didn't think that she was actually just going to leave. I knew she was going to get stopped. It was only a matter of who she was going to get stopped by. But I knew she was going to get stopped. In all reality, the faster that Cam leaves, the less awkward and uncomfortable that these scenes are between um, Jocelyn and Cam because it's just... <sighs> and honestly, tell you, I, I'm just... I'm happy for the actor. I hope he does some great things or whatever because um, the way, here's the thing. The way that Jack, because here's, here's the thing. A lot of times when these actors leave, these actors leave or whatever, they usually have a story that sometimes doesn't really fit too well. Okay, so the way that Josh the Smith there treating Cam you know, she, she cheated on him and everything like that. And she was just like, I don't owe you anything. And I just have this weird feeling that if the actor was still staying on the show, she might not have acted like that. Like, I get that Joss has her bratty moments. She has her moments where she could just irritate the life out of people. But she's never been that cold before. Not that cold. So I have, a, I have a feeling it had a lot to do with the actor leaving and them just, you know, fast forwarding this whole relationship or whatever. Like, they seem like they're really hot and heavy and just totally into each other. And I feel like that's meant there because the actor's leaving. Had the actor stayed, I don't know if she would have really gave that same energy to Spencer. They might have wanted to be in together, but I just don't think it would have been so much of a... I don't want to sit there and say a rush job, but just a very, like, the fact that she was that cold to him, I just don't know if that would have really happened if the actor would have stayed. I feel like that's about it. I can't really think of anything else that happened. Um, all in all, I'll sit there and say this episode is decent. I get a person did without the trainer and Marshall stuff, but if you're a trainer fan, then you're gonna like it. It wasn't like the worst thing ever. It wasn't torture, but it it is what it is. Anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna go. I wanna thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.